At this point, it is my privilege to announce the winners of the annual Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award. We started this award in, in, in 2012 to recognize the tremendous contributions our alumni have made to science and society. With such a great history of distinguished alumni, there are really countless individuals who would be deserving of this award. After careful deliberation by the Alumni Award Committee, it is my honor to present sisters Judith and Julie Swain as the co-winners of the 2013 Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award. I invite Dr. Judy Swain and Dr. Julie Swain to come forward to be recognized and receive the award. One more. <laughs> to twin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Judy Swain received her bachelor's degree from our department in 1970 before going to obtain her MD from, the, from UC San Diego. Um, Judy Swain currently serves as the executive director of the Singapore Institute for Clinical Science within the A-STAR and as the Lian Jing Shao Professor of Medicine at the National University of Singapore. Her research interests focus on assessing and enhance, enhancing human performance in extreme environments. Some of the previous positions and leadership roles in Judy Swain's illustrious career include her service as the Dean for Translational Medicine and as the founding director of the College of Integrated Life Sciences, COILS, at UC San Diego, president of the American Association of Physicians, and service on the National Institute of Health Advisory Research Resources Council. Like her sister, Dr. Julie Swain, also received her bachelor's degree in chemistry at UCLA in 1970. From there, she went on to Baylor College of Medicine to earn her MD. Julie Swain currently serves as a cardiovascular surgeon at the Food and Drug Administration. Her current research field explores the cerebral consequences of cardiac surgery. During her distinguished career, she served as the acting deputy associate administrator of the Office of Biological and Physical Research at NASA. Her duties included oversight and management of the division responsible for the International Space Station research and other science research programs in biology, biotechnology, biomedical research, and the physical sciences. Julie Swain also holds the distinction of, as the first woman to lead cardiovascular surgery division in the US when she held the position of chief of cardiovascular sur surgery at Louisiana State University. As you can see from the much condensed biographies of these two alumni, the Swain sisters embody the essence of chemistry and biochemistry alumni award. We are grateful that they are able to join us today. And I would like now to invite, to invite Dr. Judy Swain to come forward and uh, present her address. And, and she will be followed by Dr. Julie Swain. Well, first, we want to give a special acknowledgement to the parents, family, and friends of our graduates. Without you, our grads literally wouldn't be here today. You have worked hard to support your new graduates, and this is a very special day for both of you. We are honored to be here today as graduates of the Department of Chemistry Class of 1970. We may have graduated when some of, before some of your parents were even born. <laughs> Uh, this, the time here was formative for us, particularly because of the mentorship and friendship of a number of very special faculty members, including Chuck Noble, Nobler, uh, Ken Trueblood, Dan Kivelson, Willard Libby, and Bob Scott. 
Julie and I are going to do a duet today with separate messages. I bet you've never seen this at a graduation. I haven't. <laughs> As I was trying to decide what to say today, I thought I would reflect on the graduation addresses that I listened to as a graduate of UCLA and UCSD. The problem is I can't remember what the speakers said at any of my graduations. To make matters worse, I can't even remember who the speakers were. So much for plan A. So instead, I decided to pass on some advice gained from my personal journey with the hope that a little something that I say will stick. Back in 1970, I couldn't have imagined where my career would take me, and I suspect the same will be for you. In fact, if you think you have your life perfectly planned out, you will have a number of really big surprises. As John Lennon once said, life is what's ha what happens when you're busy making other plans. I decided to focus on passing along three pieces of advice. Why did I choose three? If you play golf, you know that at most you can remember three things when you're executing a swing. I thought that might be a good rule to operate by. So the three topics that I will talk about are, one, dream big, two, don't forget your roots, and three, give back. My first piece of advice is dream big. You must follow your heart and your passions and go for the big goal in life. Use your imagination and take chances and don't let others define your life for you. I still remember when Julie and I were in seventh grade. One day our guidance counselor asked us what we thought we wanted to be when we grew up and we both said we wanted to be doctors. He suggested that for girls, becoming a, gr a nurse was a much more attainable goal. I can remember this to this day, and our reply to him was, I don't think so. Anyway, in Singapore, where my husband and I now work, I sometimes see students who are paralyzed with respect to dreaming and choosing by what they feel are expectations set for them by family and friends. Remember, it is your life and it is your choice as what to do with your life. You really can do anything you set your heart to. Not every dream will come true, but you will learn something in pursuit of your dreams that may serve you well in the future time. Also, remember that you can only attain a goal if you actually set one in the first place. If you just take life one day at a time, then you are never going to steer anything but a random course in life. Don't wait for the right time to pursue your dreams. As an anonymous philosopher at Nike once said, just do it and do it now. So my second piece of advice to you is don't forget your roots. Be thankful for the opportunities that have been available to you and recognize that your hard work has allowed you to capitalize on many of these opportunities. But think of all those who are just as smart as any of us and who work just as hard, but who, because of circumstances, didn't have the same opportunities that you and I have had. It's not all about smarts and work ethic. Luck and circumstance do contribute significantly to our successes. So when we see those who are struggling throughout life, we have to realize that, for the grace of God, go I. I can share our personal experience with you on this topic. We grew up just east of here in Cypress and Orange County, which at that time was a blue collar farm worker community. No one in our family had gone to college before us. Our mother and father were from large families with immigrant roots in the coal mines of Washington State. Our parents realized that going to college was important, even though they themselves had never had the chance to do so. From our earliest age, we knew that we would go to college, but this was not true of most of our fellow students. Of the 400 graduates in our high school class, only four other students went on to a four-year college. We could have easily been with the majority of our fellow students who might have not been encouraged to have dreams, or if they did, were not financially able to attain those dreams. For those of you who might be the first college graduates in your family, always remember your roots. And remember your friends and families who didn't have the opportunities that have come your way. And for those of you who grew up in more privileged circumstances, remember that not everyone else was as lucky as you to be born into those circumstances. Remember this as you encounter those who contribute in some small or large way to your success. Maybe it's the shuttle bus driver who waits when she sees you running for the bus. Maybe it's the cafeteria worker who serves you lunch, or the janitor who cleans your workplace and takes extra care to tidy up for you and your fellow workers. Take the time to say hello, to learn something about them, 
to acknowledge their efforts, remember your roots, and practice humility and humanity. And my third and last piece of advice is give back. You will likely find yourself in a position of being able to donate money to worthy causes. That's great, and you should do so. But in addition, you should give of yourself to causes that you have passion for. You don't have to confine your volunteerism to what you are trained to do, and no volunteer job should be beneath you if you believe and are passionate about a cause. In Singapore, my first volunteer activity, along with a flock of high school girls, was cleaning cat cages at the Humane Society. It was a great chance to connect with young Singaporean students, to meet the public, and to talk to them about responsibility of caring for a pet. Julie and I both volunteer as forest fire lookouts on top of Palomar Mountain in San Diego. Uh, we both live in La Jolla. A chance to do something useful as well as a day in the forest. You really can't beat that. So look for opportunities where you can give back, even when those opportunities are not serving to further your own career. You will feel good about yourself and you will set an example for your friends and colleagues. And it will show that you care about more than just yourself. Well, ho hopefully these three pieces of advice, dream big, remember your roots, give back. Hopefully I've gotten to you thinking a few minutes about these matters. So in closing, you family members and parents should be proud of your graduates and you graduates should be proud of what you have accomplished. I wish you the best in your life ahead and I have no doubt that you will do great things. Again, congratulations. Well, I want to thank the faculty for the opportunity for Judy and I to get back to UCLA. And I want to acknowledge Chuck Nobler, Bob Scott, Ken Trueblood, who's no longer with us, uh, and Willard Libby, who were really formative for our time at UCLA. Um, seeing the faculty here reminds me that just about every weekend, Ken Trueblood, who was then the chair of the department, Judy and I would play doubles tennis. And then we would have a stable of faculty members like Paul Boyer, Dan Atkinson, who would be the fourth for our killer tennis games. It was really a community here in the Department of Chemistry, and I think it's that way still. And this is a long way from the late 60s when we were here. We protested the Vietnam War and ended up stopping the Vietnam War. The university was on strike after Kent State. Uh, we marched on and occupied the chancellor's office. And on a lighter note, we beat SC, we went to the Rose Bowl, <laughs> Gary Beban became uh, the Heisman Trophy winner, and Lou Alcinder and Arthur Ashe were our uh, classmates. Well, I agree with Judy that you need to give back. And you graduates, just like I was at this stage, we mostly took. Our families supported us and gave us everything. Uh, our, univer our schools and universities uh, really were kind of a cocoon for protection. But once you get out and get into society, you really do need to give back. And it needs to be something you're passionate about, not something you just want to put on your CV in the future. For example, while practicing surgery, I really had no time to volunteer time. I gave money, but I didn't have time. Now that I don't practice anymore, not all, all night operating, I can give back. And I have uh, search and rescue dogs, so we find lost people in San Diego. Um, and I evacuate animals in front of disasters for the Humane Society. So it's important to find something you really like and go for it. And Judy had three pieces of device, uh, advice. Being a surgeon, you know, we're kind of simple. We just have really one piece of advice. And for me, it's pre-plan. And what does that mean? Uh, for you graduates, whatever job and career you have first, may in fact most likely won't be the same job or career you have when you're your parents' age. Likely for the parents here who probably in their 40s or 50s, you're probably thinking about what you're gonna do in the next 10 and 20 years. Uh, so my advice is to plan ahead, be flexible, and really be open to taking a new risk on a completely new endeavor. Start thinking now of what you might want to do in your next career. Many people evolve to a progression of jobs, such as going from a faculty member to a chairman, maybe to a dean, in, in industry, maybe from a researcher to a supervisor, and then uh, more on the business side. But I urge you con to, to consider revolution instead of evolution. 
I decided when I was still in surgery training that I really didn't want to be doing cardiac surgery when I was 70 years old because, you know, manual labor gets a whole lot harder when you get older. I spent many years setting the stage for a new career. So when I was 50, I stopped operating and had the opportunity to go direct science in the human spaceflight program at NASA. After that, I joined the Food and Drug Administration and worked on artificial heart uh, type activities. That's two careers after my main career, and I'm just about to embark on a third career after that in another couple months. Many of my cardiac surgery colleagues now call me and say, well, they're really tired of operating or, or physically they can't operate anymore, and they ask my advice. They think I'm lucky to have gotten the jobs I have. They are my age, but they've really never planned ahead, never had any other interests other than going to the hospital every day, and are now trying to figure out what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. In contrast, in closing, I'm going to tell you about three of my friends that really had it right. The first was a successful internist in the Boston Main Line, had a great practice, played golf at the country club, wonderful life. He quit and became a Trappist monk and then a, uh, an abbot of a monastery. Another was the head operating room nurse at UC San Diego. She went to pursue her passion of being on the ladies' professional golf tour. And finally, my sister-in-law was a teacher and a mother. She raised her kids. They got all through school. She then went to divinity school, became an Episcopal priest, and then became the Episcopal Bishop of Washington. She really had it right. So in summary, I think the lesson is really don't be afraid to change careers if your interests change. Don't be afraid to take risks and think revolution rather than evolution. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak here, and I hope you guys have a great evening tonight. Thank you.